Okay, boys and girls, welcome to math. You should be in your chapter one math workbook on page 25. We're gonna be doing lesson 1.4 today. Alrighty, okay, problem solving. So today's lesson is more about how you organize your problem. We've been really good about underlining important information in our story problems. And today we're gonna learn another strategy. The strategy today is how to take that information and organize it using a bar model. So let's take a look at what our question is. It says, Hannah has four red flowers in a vase. Okay, so here's a picture. That's helpful, right? And here's our four red flowers. So I'm gonna underline four red, okay? Cause that helps me. That helps me remember the important information in my story problem. All right, she puts two more flowers in the vase. So we haven't done this yet, but she's going to put two more flowers. I'm underlining that too, because that's some more important information. How many flowers are in the vase? So now it's asking you how many in there now. And the important thing is, is it's saying, how do you use a model to find out? So now we're gonna pour our information in here to help us organize. So what do you need to find? What are we talking about here? We're talking about flowers, right? So go ahead and trace over the word flowers. It's already written for you. Flowers is what we are talking about here. We wanna find out how many flowers Hannah has. What information do I need to use, right? We've already underlined it, so we know we need to find out. We have four red flowers, that's gonna help us. And two more, two more flowers. Now, this is the bar model I was telling you about. How do we solve it? Now we have our two add ends, four and two, that we are going to put in the top of our bar model. And you might ask, how do I know where to put the four and where to put the two? The secret is look at the size of your boxes. The size of the box that has the four in it is larger because four is a larger number than two. Two is the smaller number, so the box that holds the two is smaller. This gives me a visual right away as to where my numbers go. So I have four in the larger number and two in the smaller box, because since two is half of four, you could probably fit two of those boxes in the four. So four and two and four plus two, the total goes below. And you can see there's some lines here that tell you these two boxes together are going to make this. So these two numbers together will make this number. So four plus two, do your math. Use whatever strategy you like. You might be able to use your fingers, four, and then add two more. You might like to draw pictures, right? You might wanna draw four circles and two more circles. Whatever your strategy is, do it now. All right, four plus two, what did you get? What is four plus two? Tell me your answer. You can go ahead and say it out loud. Good. Four plus two is six, that's right. And they've already put it here for you because if you take the four and the two, these, these two boxes up here, four and two together make six. And that's how we're gonna organize our work today. Go ahead and turn the page to page 26. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna read our story problems and we're gonna put the information in our bar model. So there are seven dogs in the park, then one more dog joins them. How many dogs are in the park now? All right, so we started with seven. Let's underline our seven because that's best practices and we've been doing that. Now seven in the park and one more joins. So let's underline our one more. Okay, so we know which numbers go here. Seven, that's the bigger number, goes in the big side of the box. And one goes over here. So now we wanna find out how many are in the park altogether. So if we were using our bar model, we would do the equation seven plus one. Now remember, if you have another strategy you like to use along with your equation, you might know what seven plus one is automatically, right? But some of you might want another strategy. Feel free to use it, right? If you have finger strategy, you would hold seven and add one more. If you liked to draw circles, you might draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles and one more circle. And then you might know this is seven, so I can just count one on or maybe you're still where you're counting all those circles. You do what works for you. So seven plus one equals, go ahead and tell me. 
That's right, seven plus one equals eight. Excellent. All right, let's move on to number two. Some birds are sitting in the tree. Four more birds sit in the tree. Then there are nine birds. How many birds were in the tree before? Okay, so we're missing some numbers here. Let's go back to our story problem. It says some birds are sitting in the tree. Let's underline some. Some means we don't know the number yet, right? Four more birds sit in the tree. Okay, there's a number we do know, four. Okay, so here it is right here, four. We know there's four. And here's some, we don't know yet what that one is. Then there are nine birds. So we know there's going to be nine birds altogether. That is our sum, okay? These two together are going to make nine, or these two together are going to make nine. The mystery is what is the first number? How many birds were in the tree before? So what number, if I added four to it, would make nine? That's the mystery we're solving here. So whenever you have a missing add-in, there's a couple ways you can look at it, all right? You can say, I have nine, I know I have nine. So if I took four away from my nine, how many would I have left? That would give me the other number here. That would tell me what number plus nine, four equals nine. So remember, subtraction is the partner to addition. And whenever you're missing one of these add-ends, you need to convert it to a subtraction problem to figure out what that add-end is. So what plus four is going to equal to nine? How you would solve for this is you would take what you know, right? You're gonna take the nine and you're going to subtract the add-end you do know. So nine minus four, that is going to tell you what the missing add-end is. Let's figure that out by drawing a picture. Because when I do subtraction, picture drawing is always the easiest way for me to solve. So I'm gonna start with nine circles because I know there's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You go ahead and draw nine circles too. Sometimes you might wanna go back and count those circles to make sure you actually have nine, right? So I would count them and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I just double checked it. I do have nine circles because we know we have nine birds in the tree at the end. There's nine. All right, so I know that four more birds come to sit in the tree. That's gonna help me figure out what how I got to my nine. So to subtract, I start with nine and I minus four. And how we show subtraction with picture drawings is we cross them out. So I'm gonna cross out four, one, two, three, four. All right, so whatever number I have left, that's what I started out with. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five plus four equals nine. So I started with five. And to make sure I have the right answer, I can say, what is five plus four? Five plus four is nine. So there must have been five birds sitting in the tree, four more birds sit in the tree, then there are nine birds in the tree. This equation is now true. It makes sense. I figured it out. Remember, when you have a missing add end, turn it into a subtraction problem. Okay, let's go on. There are four horses in the field. Some more horses run to the field. Now there are 10 horses in the field. How many horses run to the field? All right, look at, what are we missing again? We're missing one of our add-ends, aren't we? When you have missing add-ends, sometimes it's a trickier problem. So we start with four. We know there are four horses. Then we get some more horses come, but we don't know how many more. But then at the end, there are 10 all together. So just like up here, we have to figure out what plus four is equal to 10. What plus four is equal to 10? Remember, if you're missing one of your add-ins, turn it into a subtraction problem. So if four plus whatever equals 10, then I'm going to take my total, which is 10, 
I'm going to minus the number I do know to find the number I don't know. So the easiest way for me to do a subtraction problem is to draw it out. So let's draw it out. I'm going to start with 10. So I need to draw it out with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The easiest way is just to draw it out. You could also use your fingers, right? Because it's 10 or less, it's pretty easy to use our fingers. We could do a subtraction problem by taking 10, minusing four, and then we would know what it is, right? So either way, fingers or pictures, all right? 10 minus four, or 10 minus one, two, three, four is gonna give us the same answer. So what is 10 minus four, boys and girls? Yep, it's six. So if 10 minus four equals six, then four plus what equals 10? Yeah, the missing number is six. 4 plus 6 equals 10. Let's move on. All right, here we go. Luis has 12 crayons. Five of the crayons are red. The rest are blue. How many crayons are blue? We have, we know five, right? Five of them are red. The rest are blue. There's 12 crayons altogether. Five are red, some are blue. All together, he has 12. So again, we are missing one of the add-ins. So we are going to take what we do know and minus it from the total to get our missing number. So I'm gonna start with 12. We'll do this right here. And we're gonna subtract what we do know, which is that there's five and we're gonna find out what we're missing. So you use whatever strategy you like, whether it's picture strategy, right? Using our fingers might be tricky because we only have 10 fingers. You could use your counters, right? You could use your blocks and get 12 blocks out that won't all be the same color, and you could minus five of those blocks, or you can draw a picture. So let's draw a picture right now. I'm gonna draw a picture. So I'm gonna start with 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 circles. I'm going to subtract five to find out what number is left. Remember, he has 12 crayons, five crayons are red. We're trying to figure out how many are blue. So I have 12 crayons. I'm gonna subtract the five that are red. One, two, three, four, five. So all the rest are blue. Let's see how many are blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven crayons are blue. Fill in your chart, seven are blue. Five plus seven is equal to 12. All right, good job. Okay, here we go. Eight bugs are flying. Two more bugs fly with them. How many bugs are flying now? Okay, so we have eight bugs that are flying. Two more fly. How many are flying all together? This one is pretty straightforward, right? We're not missing any add-ins. We're just looking for the sum. So in this case, we're just taking the eight and we're adding two to get our total. Use whatever strategy you like. All these strategies are available. You can use your blocks. You could use your hands, fingers, right? Eight plus two more, right? Or you could draw eight circles and add two more. We're gonna use fingers this time for me because that's easiest. So I'm gonna start with eight, or I could start with eight like this, right? That might be easier. And add two more. And what number do I get? Yep. I end up with 10. 
So say it with me. Eight plus two equals 10. Great. Okay, here we go. We have a puzzler question. We can do it. Some ducks are swimming in a pond. That's this one, we don't know. Three more ducks swim in the pond. Here's our three more. Then there are six ducks in the pond. Okay, we have six all together at the end. How many ducks were in the pond before? How many were here? All right, we're gonna have six at the end. We know we have three. What number, when added to three, equals six? I'm gonna give you a clue. If you know your doubles facts, you already know the answer to this question. But since we're missing one of our add-ins, I'm gonna do a subtraction problem. I'm gonna take what I know of how many total there are, six. I am going to subtract the number I do know, and that will help me with the number I don't know. So if I have six and I take away three, one, two, three, what do I have left? Right, I have three. But let's double check our work and make sure we did it right. So if I took three and I added three more, would that make six? Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. It does. So we can put that there. Three plus three equals six. Good job. Okay. We will do the mid-chapter checkpoint tomorrow, so don't worry about it today. But during your independent time, you will do page 28A, more problems like we did. And remember, you can always go back and look at what we did before to help you with what you're doing on your own. Then you will do page 28B as well. All right, great job.